for their geek expertise. Tune in next time when we count down your favorite quick fix games and check out our blog at g4tv.com slash filter. Until next time, I'm Diane Mizoda reminding you that if it sounds too good to be true, get in the van. Peter Malu, the man, the myth, the game developer behind, behind Fable, is with us live from London. And we'll get his thoughts on his current and future games. Plus, he's taking your phone calls. Hello? Nice, and I'm back from the Tokyo Game Show, and I have a little taste from my exclusive interview with Nintendo president Satoru Iwata, because G4 TV, the show that FEMA refuses to rescue, starts right now. Well, sad. We don't need rescuing. I don't, I, don't need, I don't need any help. We have everything we need. That's we got right. a blue coffee table here. All we right. Good. Hey, everybody. Welcome to G4 TV, the show that tells you exactly what you need to know. We really do. Now, right now, I think what Tina and I really need to know is, Jeff, tell us about Tokyo. How'd it go? It was great, guys. Yeah. I had my report last week. We had tons of fun there. Oh, but the it big thing like for so me, much fun. it was great. I mean, we got to play Xbox 360 games, got to see some PS3 videos. A lot of people are slamming PlayStation for not, you know, making PS3 playable yet. Right. Little but in due time, in due time, <laughs> exactly. But the big news, of course, was the Nintendo Revolution controller. Yes. And I was lucky enough to get an actual interview with Nintendo President Satoru Iwata. Actually, the nice. only one who got an interview the with only him. One. Congrats Thank you, Tina. on that. Yes, That's it was fantastic. good. But, you know, he, was, he stole all the headlines at TGS with this controller. So, you know, what he did was he talked all about the Revolution controller. And he also held it in his hand for our entire hour interview. This man was proud That's of awesome. what he was created. <laughs> but, you know, we touched on some other subjects during the interview as well. And one of the things we talked about was the new Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, which was unfortunately slipped in 2006. Everyone was yeah. really disappointed yep. about that. Well, here's what Awada said during my interview when I asked him why they don't just ship the new Zelda game for the revolution. Yeah. First of all, I'm very sorry, but uh, we could not keep our promise to launch the new Legend of Zelda game. Uh, by the end of this year. However, we still have another promise, and that is to launch the Twilight Princess for the GameCube. Some may say that it should be very advantageous for Nintendo to launch Legend of Zelda for Revolution, for the sales of the Revolution, but now that we have already made a promise to the GameCube user that we'll be making the Twilight Princess for the GameCube, we really don't want to disappoint them at all. Having said that, however, I'm personally looking forward to seeing how Zelda can be played with this new Revolution controller. I'm really looking forward to see how Zelda can be changed by taking advantage of this new controller. And uh, I am actually pushing Mr. Miyamoto to show what kind of things can be done with the Legend of Zelda. Put oh, around Mr. Miyamoto, huh? Yeah. I don't know. Well, I think it's, it's good. Like, he's showing yeah. some integrity. He's got a commitment to his fans, and yeah. he's willing to, you know, uphold that promise. So if you guys want to see more of my exclusive interview with Iwata, make sure to tune into G4's Tokyo Game Show special, which premieres right here on Tuesday, September 27th at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. There well, and that's not all that's happening in no. news, you guys. Not let's even let's close. find out what else is going on around the world of gaming. And the first thing is the retail price of the Xbox 360 games may be hiked up an extra 10 bucks from what we're used to paying. Is that really a shock, yeah. though? I mean, you know, the cost of development is going to increase. There's inflation. Sure. I didn't expect to pay a standard, you know, 50 or 60. It's going to go almost to 70 bucks. And that's the idea. This Good is according money. to Shin Anazawa. He's a managing director at Bandai. But they're saying, let's actually look at the numbers to show you how much of a leap it's going to cost these guys to make it for the 360. Wow. You yeah, Bandai's not a company that you know, necessarily makes the most expensive games. But, I mean, this is a thing where it's like, I mean, $9 million for wow. a game. Yeah, that's I mean, money. that's a lot of money. But still not as much as a movie. That is true, you but, know, that, that but is, a higher risk. Exactly, I yeah. think a higher risk, but I think obviously if it's going to take more to make it, it's going to take us more to play it. No, so. and, and they know, like, you know, early adopters are going to, if you're going to spend $400 on an Xbox 360, to get you to spend 70 bucks on a game, you're a hardcore gamer, you're probably yeah. willing to pay You've that You've already money. got it. There you go. But Activision actually came out today and said that all current-gen console game prices are going to drop, so you can pick up, a, a, save some bucks there and spend some bucks over there. And also, I think these developers have to take some time to develop for the new system. It's like after right. a year goes by, then they're kind of get used to the technology, everyone's going to have it, and it won't cost as much. But initially. I'm thinking we're going to be paying at least 60 bucks for every game on the Xbox 360. Believe it, sister. I don't know. I don't Sorry. work at Bandai, nor do I develop any games, but, you know. All right. Thank that God is, for GameFly. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let's see what else is going on. Now, digital distribution mm -hmm. is on the rise. According to the London-based media research firm Screen Digest, digital distribution of gaming content expects to be a $400 million industry in the West by 2010. Now, that's not including Southeast Asia, because that number would be significantly higher. I believe higher. it, though. I mean, that's $400 million, you're saying. I mean, that's yeah. not... 
tons of money considering how big we think, you know, Half-Life 2 was over mm -hmm. Steam. And Xbox Live Marketplace. I mean, there's a lot of talk about, you know, downloading games to that Xbox hard drive. Yeah. Never having to go to a store. It makes sense to me. Especially with the consoles being online. It's just mm -hmm. a way that, right, you know, and it's cheaper. Instead of sending out all the packaging and all the hardware, it's like, look, download it for cheap. It might make the games cheaper in the long run. Right. But I was thinking... I was thinking it was going to be in the billions by 2010. It will be. It will be soon after. It's the wave of the future. I mean, Revolution, all the old Nintendo games are going to be that's downloadable. Right. The Phantom yes. back in the day had people excited. That's this is obviously the way people are going to go. All right. That's not it. You guys know what else people are talking about? The announcement of the cast for True Crime New York City. That's mm. right. That's right. This is a company that actually puts a lot of money into their actors. We have got Christopher Walken, Lawrence Fishburne, Mickey Rourke, and the up-and-coming actor, his name's Avery Waddell. I don't know much about him. But he's going to be the lead character, Marcus Reed. I actually think putting these guys into a, into a game like this is a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I remember I think it was the original True Crime. Chris Walken did the, the intro for it, which is some of the best voice art I've ever oh, heard. He's, he's amazing. I love City Chris of Walken. Angels and yeah. stuff like that. So it was great. I, I talked to Lawrence Fishburne last week about this, and he said the main reason he actually did the game was because Christopher Walken had decided to do the game. So it's interesting in Hollywood, it's like one you attach one big actor to something, and all these other guys want to do the game. I think you're right, and that's it. what it's about. It's like once you get Christopher Walken, it's like, well, Christopher Walken's doing it. It's like who in the world is going to say Turns they don't want right. to do it? He's so amazing. Yeah. His voice acting work is amazing. I actually got to play the game uh, just a little while ago, and yeah. it looks really great. It's built him a Hood of New York City, and nice. they've mapped all of New York City, not just a little part, yeah. the whole city. Nice. You can run around from the Bowery play. to Harlem. I didn't play it. I saw a demo, but oh. it looked really good. And Christopher Walken does an amazing job. Yeah, that, that's going to be a lot of fun, but that's not it. You guys, once again, Microsoft's being sued for this little baby. You guys remember this? The Halo 2 Collector's Edition mm. casing. Basically, it's for a non-disclosure agreement. Mm -hmm. How it worked is a company came to them and said, hey, we can make these really cool metal cases for you. Sign this non-disclosure agreement and don't tell anyone about it. Microsoft goes, okay. But then another company said, hey, we can probably do it cheaper. Microsoft goes, okay. Don't exactly know what happened. Well, That's just a story. Allegedly. Yeah. Microsoft, yeah, once allegedly. again, <laughs> they're being sued. Who knows how it's going to all work out. But if we keep suing these companies, At least the game was good. That's games are going to be more expensive. Yeah, that's what it all comes down to, our money. Yes. That's good. good news, lots, lots happening well, out And there's there. one more thing, I don't know, if, and if, you know, there's, there's about eight Anarchy Online players, but, you know, they extended to be free for a while. It's extended now till 2007. Good. So for now, you can good. play Anarchy Online probably for the rest of your life, because I don't know who's playing that game, but for those of you that enjoy it, you got it free till 2007. Free works for me. All right, well, I say it's books if you don't come back after this, because we're bringing you Peter Manu, founder of Lionhead Studios, live via satellite from London. He's with Big Ben right after this. Come back. <laughs> Working from home changed my life. It all started when I was referred by this free service. With all the money I made working from home, I bought a new home. This is the one website you have to visit. Put your computer to work now. All you need is a computer and a little belief in yourself. I'm making $5,000 a month. I make over $7,000 a month working part-time. I love the lifestyle my home business offers. And the money's great, too. Log on to 15income.com now. Oh, hurry up, man. Box is coming in. Dude, I almost got it. Hey, how are the graphics coming on that game? I've got another one I need designed. We just finished level three and need to tighten up the graphics a little bit. Great. Hey, I can't believe we got jobs doing this. I know. And my mom said I would never get anywhere with these games. Train online for a degree in game art and design. Call 800-914-8582. Call now. Give a girl on a trampoline a chance. Watch The Man Show, tonight at 10 on G4.
You know, when you think of game designers who always strive to push gameplay in new directions, the name Peter Molyneux always bubbles to the surface, thanks to games like Populous, Syndicate, and Black and White 2, which comes out next week here in the U.S. Well, tonight we are truly honored to have Peter join us live via satellite from London, England, the home of Lionhead Studios. Hey, Peter, thanks for joining us. How are you? Great, thank you very much. It's great to be here. Thank you very much. Great to have you here. Now, Peter, I want to, talk to start off with breaking news in the Nintendo Revolution controller. Now, that was unveiled last week. Mm. A few, you know, a few weeks ago, you had this quote where you talked about how never underestimate Nintendo. So I assume you got to see it ahead right. of time, right? I mean, you know, known rumors about it for a little while, and I can tell you it's a great, great product. And that is exactly what I meant by never underestimate Nintendo. You know, this is a revolution. It's what the, you know, it's not the hardware of the machine, it's not the speed of the machine, it's the fact that that device will enable games to be made that are not like no other have ever been. So are you already thinking of ideas? You think you're going to do a game for it? Well, I mean, I, I, you know, absolutely, it's, a, it's so exciting to, to, you, to actually, for the first time, feel that you can move something in a 3D space. I mean, you've got to remember, Jeff, that the controllers that we're currently using now on the other consoles were really have their origin in platform games. Yeah. They have no sympathy for moving around in a, you know, a 3D world, and that's what makes the revolution so so exciting and yeah I would love to be doing something. Well, you sort of did that a little bit with black and white where you can sort of trace things out for the spells so we'll have to see black and white on revolution mm -hmm. maybe right? Well I mean th that becomes a real possibility I'm not saying that it is going to happen but just imagine with black and white being able to stroke your creature being able to being able to slap your creature, being able to cast spells, being able to move around a world in a natural way. I mean, I think all of those things start being really possible uh, with that controller. Actually, well, let's talk about Black and White 2, which is uh, coming out here in the U.S. Uh, you said you're done with it now, you finally completed it. And this one has yes. a much more of sort of an RTS sort of feel to it. The first game, you know, it was a little bit different. Looking back now, do you feel that you, you wish you sort of would have made the first Black and White more like the sequel? Absolutely. You know, there, <clears throat> there's a couple of things that we've done, a couple of really important things that we've done with Black and White 2. The first thing is, you know, just to have some awesome technology um, and to, you know, put that into a, a strong gameplay, uh, uh, gameplay game. And that was the problem with Black and White 1. It's some awesome technology, but where was the game there? And we really wanted to put the game in. So we've actually decided to put two game elements in. Well, the first is uh, what you think of as a god game. Now, you may have thought of a god game as being, you know, dealing with little people and looking after them. Well, we've changed that. Now you get the god game part of this game, the good part of it, is all about creating things, all about being, you're creating wonderful cities, looking after those people, giving them an environment they like to live in. The more beautiful your city is, the more success you will have in the game. You can play that game without ever going to war. But what you also have is an RTS element. You can build up your city a little bit and then take all of your population out to war and have these really big battles. You're always that, so good at those two gameplay elements are. You're always so good at describing Sorry. your games, Peter. You, you paint these beautiful pictures. I know one criticism that people sometimes have of your games is that you have these huge promises. Mm. And sometimes when the game comes out, you know, you don't necessarily deliver on all the promises. I remember famously with Fable, you had to write your apology letter on mm. the forums. You, you, is that a fair criticism that people, you know, give you? Uh, you know, I think it is. And, and, and here's the problem is, you know, I enjoy what I do so much. And I can't help, you know what it's like, Jeff, I cannot help talking about the games I'm making way before anybody else talks about those games. And that, what that means is I'm talking enthusiastically about, you know, this feature and that feature that we're considering. And normally, you know, when it comes down to the, when it comes down to the final cut, you have to cut some things out. But I can promise you this. Black and White 2 is everything that I promised it would be. It is, you know, epic, it's huge battles, it's great cities which you create. And, you know, I'm, I'm learning, to, learning to, to, to curb myself a little bit. <laughs> well, you've got, you know, three games coming out this fall. You've got Black and White 2, you've got the movies coming out from Activision, and then Fable, the Lost Chapters, the, the PC version of Fable. Yeah. With three games in development, so we're almost shipping simultaneously, do you, do you ever kind of worry that, you, you know, you can't devote your full attention to each game individually and they sort of suffer at all? Well, you know, <clears throat> when this happened at Lionhead, we, we had the hardest and biggest mountain to climb that we ever have faced. You know, it's bad enough completing one game, but completing three is, has been really tricky. But the reason why the three came, have come along together, because at Lionhead, we just keep on developing the game until we're happy with it. 
And that meant that Black and White 2 had to be delayed a little bit, the movies had to be delayed a little bit, and it meant that they all came together. But I wow. promise you this, they are all fantastic quality games. Excellent. Well, I also want to ask you about some of the stuff you have coming forward, because as you said, you always sort of start talking about these games just when you have the original ideas. Now, I met once the little boy, Dimitri, who is sort of the basis for your next game. I remember yes. he was in a hotel room, he was working on his math homework, and he said, Jeff, this is the boy that inspired my next game, Dimitri. Tell us, how did he inspire this idea for this game, and what is it? Well, I can tell you a little bit. I can't tell you much about Dimitri because it's still a long way off, and especially the last comment I made about being enthusiastic and telling about features that don't exist. But I can tell right. you this. Dimitri is a game about you. It allows you to relive your life from being uh, a young teen uh, on, on, on through over a long, fairly long time and to relive your life to make the same mistakes you made in your life or to make or try and correct your life. And that is the inspiration of the game. When I saw Dimitri when he was 14 and 15 and 16 making those terrible mistakes I made as a kid, you know, personally, I never spoke to a girl until I was 17 years old. I thought they would just laugh at me. And right. that was a huge mistake because, you know, I, girls are, you know, I should have spoken to them a lot earlier. And that's the inspiration for the game. It's a living a life again, allowing wow. you to live your life again. Well, that sounds exciting, Peter. We can't wait to hear more. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, good luck with all your future projects. Thanks, Peter. All right, well, stick around, Peter. Thank you very because much, after sir. the break, we're giving you guys at home a chance to talk with Peter about his career and the future of video games. Stick around. We'll be right back after this. When it absolutely, positively has to get there, guaranteed. I'm listening. You're quite a guy. <laughs> Just came out of the dry cleaners. Transporter 2, January 10th. Thanks to you, that $60 million transfer got to London. That website you designed just got its 2 millionth hit. And your digital evidence made the case a slam dunk. Now, you'll be prepared to accomplish these and more with DeVry's Enhanced Computer Information Systems Degree Program. Because our program lets you choose the career track you want to specialize in. In demand, in the headlines careers you can check out right now. Just go to DeVryLogon90.com and get their free guide to exciting careers like computer forensics, web development, information system security. And because it's DeVry, you can get there fast with a four-year degree you can earn in less than three with classes that start right away. And you know you're going to get this and even more of this plus the flexibility of classes on-site or online. Want your best shot at a career that just keeps getting hotter? Call 1-877-DEVRAI-90 or go to DeVryLogon90.com for your free guide today. Because it's right now and it's here at DeVry. Honey! Good job! Good job! What is this? We're the war movie from Netflix! Wow, you guys got here fast! Average deployment time for a DVD is about one business day! Hey, come on! was also expecting a couple of romantic comedies. They got here when we did. I don't know where they are now. There's a movie waiting for you at home. Netflix. All the DVDs you want starting at only $9.99 a month. No late fees. What is it, Bob? You can take yeah, this yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You take this job and shove it. Blah, blah, blah. So you're quitting, huh? Yep, I'm going to be my own boss. I bet you're going to be your own boss. What do you know about being your own boss, Mr. Entrepreneur? Uh, going to buy a business, start from scratch? How about startup money? Whoa. Do you even know where to get startup money? I'm uh, my brother. Got a plan, a program, a mentor, Bob? You can't be your own boss without them. I can't? You're pathetic. You need Entrepreneur of the Year nominee, Bruce A. Berman's book and CD. It's called I Got Here, You Can Too. Want to be rich, Bob? That's the idea. Then you gotta buy his book and CD. It shows exactly how Berman made a fortune being his own boss, and you can too. Want to start making money now, Bob? Uh-huh, sure. Thanks, guys. I'm Bruce A. Berman. If you want to make five, ten, even $15,000 a month right now from the comfort of your own home, then you don't have to buy my book. I will give you a free copy of my book and my Making Money CD. Together, they're over $100 value. This limited time offer is available only on my website below. So go to my website now. Okay, welcome back. Now, we are uniting gamers around the world this week. 
Right now, we're going to give you guys at home the chance to interact directly with Peter Molyneux, founder of Lionhead Studios. We've got him live via satellite from London. So let's open up the lines and find out what you people at home want to know. First up, we've got Gerald Scott from Valiant, Oklahoma on the line. Gerald? Um, yeah, I was wondering if BC was canceled for sure, if there's any chance of it coming back for development. Wow, Joe, <clears throat> that's a very good question. Actually, we have, um, we've been thinking about BC for the next generation. Um, obviously, the Xbox 360 is really exciting, and, you know, it would be fantastic to have that world again on Xbox 360, but I can tell you that it, we're still wondering about what next steps to take. So we haven't definitely uh, uh, cancelled it. Um, but we're not definitely in production. Sorry, I can't be more exact. <laughs> All right, well, that's good to know. Peter, along those same lines, uh, any chance of a sequel to Populous or Syndicate? I would <coughs> love to do a sequel of Populous. It would be, uh, it's one of my ambitions to do, to do that. Um, I, unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, EA is, um, owns all the rights to Populous and Syndicate, and uh, we, if they have plans to do it, I would love to do it, but there are no, no plans at the moment. Well, thank cool. you. We're going to get some information out of them very soon. Some concrete. All right, on the phone, we got Jay Johnson from Atlanta, Georgia. What's your question for Peter, Jay? I'm just wondering if, over his career, there's been any games that he thought were just going to be monster hits that he's been working on and ended up coming out of the gate just totally flat, or vice versa. Question? Question. <clears throat> you know, that's an interesting question. You know, how do you know whether a game's going to be good or not? And I can tell you, a lot of the games that I've worked on have been absolutely atrocious at some <laughs> stage of development or, or another. And, you know, you sit down and, and I, you know, this is what you're like. You're like this the whole time. You've got your head in your hands thinking, how can we have created such utter rubbish? And in the end, what we try and do is say, look, we've just got to go back to the drawing board on this. So, worst game I've ever worked on was probably a game called Powermonger back in the uh, early uh, 1990s. And that was one of those ones where I just wanted to bury myself in a hole and never come out again. But what about some other games on the market that surprised you with their success or failure that you didn't create? You know, <clears throat> there's, been, there's a hell of a lot of those. I mean, I, I, the list is very long. I mean, one of the most surprising games ever, I think, was a game called Ico. Oh, yeah. uh, which was on the PlayStation 2. And, you know, I, I heard about that. And it was all about a little girl being led around. I thought, what a boring <laughs> thing to do. And I sat down and played that, and I thought, fantastic. That is, you know, really a fantastic game and a fantastic concept. Wow. And there's been quite a few times. Resident Evil, uh, the latest Resident Evil on, on GameCube, I think, is just brilliant how they've taken something which seemed to be drying up and taken it an awful lot further. Um, you know, there's some f fantastic games like that. All right, we've got Ben Krautkramer on the line from Milwaukee. Hey, Ben, what's your question for Peter? I was wondering, what do you feel is the largest untapped gaming genre? Well, Ben, that's a very good question. And uh, without doubt for me, the genre that has not been touched for a long, long time is the adventure game genre. I, mean, I don't know if you remember, but it was huge at one time. There was all the Sierra Online stuff, the LucasArts stuff, but that's just with away and way and died. Some stuff's been done on first-person shooters with it, but really that needs a, a hell of a revolution. And, uh, you know, that's a real fascination. Also, I would say things like sports titles, you know, you're seeing some interesting innovations in AHL, but I reckon they've got a long way to go as well. And online, when we all the consoles come online, they're really going to change every genre we can think of. So, good question. Now, Peter, I know uh, last time I talked to you, you sort of hinted that maybe you might be doing a first-person shooter in the future. Is that is that possible? Is another genre you might explore? Yeah, first-person first-person shooter genre. You know, what my fascination is is <clears throat> simulations and imagine a first-person shooter set not in a story-based world but in a simulated world. Imagine being, I mean, this is the pretty evil side of me, but imagine being let loose with the arsenal of weapons that you have got in the average first-person shooter in a truly simulated world. And, you know, if you remember Syndicate, you'll remember the damage you could cause there. So I think there's, you know, some interesting stuff with that as well. Are you actually working on it yet or are you just thinking about it? Just thinking about it at the moment. Um, again, it's it's hard to be exact about that because you know if 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 I if I if I shoot my mouth off too early, then we'll have nothing to talk about in the All future. Right. Well, we'll bring you back when you're ready to talk, Peter.
thank you so much for joining us, and I uh, hope to see you soon here in the States. He's thanks. such a good guy. He's so Love fun to guy. talk to. Thanks you know? a lot, Peter. Okay, okay. Thanks, thanks Peter. very much, guys. Now, you at home, thanks, bye. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking this show is just so damn good, I don't think it could get any better. But you know what? You're wrong. Hang in just a few more minutes, because after the break, I'm going to give you a glimpse into the gaming future. And it's looking good, guys. Nice. Yeah. Looking good. Looking as good it's as that. Like crystal ball. It's not like Tina Wood good. But it's, it's like, Lord you know, boy good. Lord boy, all right. Looks for me. Are those voodoo dolls? Mm hmm This one's Overages, and I call this one Roaming. You know, with Sprint's fair and flexible plans, there are no huge overages or roaming charges, so you're in control. So they worked. <sighs> now I'm gonna make one for loneliness. Sprint's new fair and flexible plans. You control your plan. It doesn't control you. Call 800 Sprint One for plans starting at just twenty nine ninety nine. Call 800 Sprint One now. Sprint. Yes, you can. On January twenty seventh, the mother of all comedies. Ooh, there's a new sheriff in town. Is back. Big Mama, you stole my man. She stole a man. But I know I gave him back. Martin Lawrence. Could you give me a hand with my bra? I just got my nails done. <laughs> Big Mama's house too. Time for me to drink a forty and watch Doctor Phil. Rated PG thirteen, January twenty seventh. Right now, a high-performance Dell XPS system with an Intel Pentium D processor with dual-core processing and a 19-inch flat panel can be yours for only $969. And for unlimited time, qualifying XPS customers pay no interest for 18 months. XPS, the ultimate Dell PC. Join the Rentway family. Your satisfaction is my personal guarantee. We are family. Check this out. This is what we do for a living. We're video game designers. And we're game programmers. With the training offered at Collins College, you can learn to design, code, and test games like this. And this. Game design is a growing career. For a brochure on a career in game design, call Collins College at 1-888-256-1200 now. That's 1-888-256-1200. Call Collins College now. Engage. Star Trek The Next Generation. Begins Sunday at 7 on G4. The show that made it okay to consider girls on a trampoline a spectator sport. The show that made it okay to laugh at a midget just because he's a midget. Gentlemen, it's okay to be a man again. Blast away! The Man Show is back tonight at 10 p.m. on G4. All right, guys, coming up next week, G4TVs.com's World Tour continues as Laura heads off to Paris to learn about the making of the new World War II game, Brothers in Arms, Earned in Blood. Laura hits the front lines next Friday night at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. Don't miss it. I sure do. Absolutely. Good times. But you at home, you're just in time for our game of the future, brought to us by Toyota. Sort of a Star Wars. Yes, right. all right. right. Well, this week, what I had to go with my favorite franchise, Sly 3, Honor Among Thieves, the latest release by Sucker Punch. And in case you're wondering why I'm wearing these silly glasses, it's because the game's in 3D, partially. Not every level, but most levels are off offered to you in 3D or in regular. And when I first heard this little idea, I'm like, oh my god, that's so lame. Like, you don't look stupid enough playing video games. Now I gotta wear these dumb glasses. That's gonna be terrible. But then I tried it. And if you, play, good? if you play in a dark room and it's just you and your Sly and your Bentley and your Murray and you're just rolling with it, it actually works and it's a really, really cool addition to the game. You got all your favorite characters back in the game, the really fun, bright, cell shade animation and all those moves that you love when you can sneak and, and steal and like pickpocket and a whole bunch of new moves. Right. Bentley comes back, he's in a wheelchair because he got caught in an accident in the last, yeah. you know, the last time. Anyway, he's in a wheelchair, which Murray feels really bad about, right. but his wheelchair is all amped up with these really cool gadgets. Like pimp my wheelchair? Totally, he's got this new thing where he can shoot this 
bomb that makes your enemy fall asleep, wow. and then once he falls asleep, you go up and nail a bomb on him, and he explodes. But there's no blood, there's no violence. This is a very good game. So is it not more of the same? Is it really worth picking up? A brand uh, no, new no, game? no. Initially, it started out as a little bit more of the same, and I was like, okay, cool, because I like there's it. There's a plane like, stuff. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff. Exactly. Like, there's a plane, plane thing, thing yeah. which is also a 3D level. Wow. There's a boat mission. He does a lot of new moves. I'm telling you, it is well worth the. the, the it's a whole we new game. It it's out. not just. It's not just an expansion. Can Tina. I try the glasses, please? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. You can try. Try them on. All right. Well, good tips, Laura. Thank you. Oh, sorry. It's coming out late September. Look forward next week. Cool. Next week, slide three on Among Thieves. We will pick it up. All right, guys. Well, that is it for this week. We want to thank our guest, Peter Molyneux, for joining us all the way from London. Now, if there's another big game designer you guys want to see on the show, go to g4tvtheshow.com and post a message in our forums. We'll try to get him on the show. Yeah. So that's it, guys. We'll see you again next week. Good night. See? You don't even look not cool. Like, you look cool. 3D.